Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek Bootcamp. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about collections. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this episode, we're going to be talking about loops. So what loops allow you to do is to um, iterate over a collection or um, or just iterate over numbers in the cases, the first few cases I'm going to be showing you, and uh, do something based on that. So first one I'm going to show you, this very verbose way of doing it, this is very like a hold on, uh, um, leftover from Java, uh, which is still a valid way to do things. And um, in some other languages, you'll get something similar to this. So you'll have a for statement, which is, you know, actually very common in many languages. And then you'll define a variable and set that variable equal to some starting point. And then you'll have a condition, which will be, you know, once this condition is uh, met, you'll stop looping. And then you'll have a way of uh, actually incrementing the variable all within, you know, this first part of this statement right here. Doesn't mean that within this statement, uh, as you can see, we have, you know, a block statement here with the curly brackets. I could actually manipulate that variable within here. But in general use, you know, this would be the way you would actually increment it. Now, if I run this, you'll see how I have something else going on here as well. So, actually, let me comment this out because this is for later. And we'll rerun that. Go back up to here and see what we have is we have the numbers printing out 0 all the way up to 9 because uh, we start with 0 and basically the first number is 0. And then uh, as long as x is less than 10, so once it's 10, it'll stop, and it won't print 0. So when it's 9 here, it'll come through here. And we have x++. plus plus. This is a way of uh, actually incrementing uh, a variable uh, within a, a variety of languages, uh, not just in Groovy. But so, And then we're just printing out the actual number x. So that's one way of just the, you know using a loop to print out a list of numbers. So there are actually in Groovy there are many ways to do this and they each show you uh, some different features uh, in the language. So I'm going to go through those right now and the first one is using dot each. Now and I've, I'm using uh, this format which uh, is just a way to get uh, essentially a list of uh, numbers from 0 to 9 uh, and I'm doing dot each for that and when you do a, a dot each you get uh, a block which is called a closure in Groovy which uh, is far more advanced than what we're going to talk about uh, within these tutorials. I might talk about it a little bit more in the next uh, episode when I talk about functions, just to uh, mention it briefly, but uh, essentially this is just a, another block, and we uh, in it uh, we get this variable called it, which is just the default variable. You can actually override and, and have it called whatever you want, uh, you know, subject for another tutorial. But so it goes through each of these, you know, being a dot each, and prints, uh, prints it. So if I run this, you get you know the same results uh, zero through nine printed out. So moving on, uh, another thing in Groovy, which this is particular to Groovy, is uh, it doesn't. I should say it doesn't really have primitive variables. It does and it doesn't. You know because Java has primitive variables like integer in most languages a primitive variable where you cannot actually call methods on it but groovy does you know some manipulation so that uh, we can actually call methods on this and like all the primitive variables become uh, what are known as object variables I'll, I'll talk much more about that 
later on, but you know, just just for the sake of argument, uh, in, in Groovy, what you can do is you can actually call methods on you know primitive numbers like this and say zero and dot up to nine. So if I run this, we get zero through nine again. So okay, that's another way to do it. And actually, where I'm showing these numbers, you could actually substitute the number with a variable, which uh, you know might make more sense uh, depending on what you're doing. But you know, this is just some examples that I'm showing here. We also have times, which will go through this and increment all the way up to, you know, ten again. So if I run this, you'll see we get zero through ten again. So that's another way of doing it. And here is a, a very different way of uh, looping, which is a while statement. So a uh, little bit different than an if statement. We uh, don't actually define any variables within it, usually. We just have a condition, and while this condition is true, wh whatever we put into its block right here will be run. Now, um, it's, it's worth noting here that, uh, you know, well, actually, we'll just run this right now, just to show you that, again, it does print out 0 through 9. But it's worth noting here that if I set this something to something that was, you know, like uh, 100, um, or actually, let's see, so 100, and if I came in here, that would be uh, greater than, so this one ever execute. Um, but this wouldn't ever actually ever uh, execute. But if I did something, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of a, a good way to do this. So while x, if I had something like this, um, while x is greater than 10, and if I run this here, you know, it, it basically, you know, we're adding uh, to x right here, incrementing it, and it will actually never get out of here because x will always be greater than 10. So we'll get caught in what's called an infinite loop. This is something you have to be careful about when you're actually doing loops is that your condition will be something that will eventually happen. Um, and depending on what the condition is, uh, this can have uh, performance impact on you know the code that you're running. If you have something that runs for a very long time, you'll be stuck in this loop for a long time and you know that will it'll take as much time as it takes to actually come to that condition. So if I actually ran this here, I would be caught in an infinite loop, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so let's move on. And here we'll go uh, just for a little bit more of a practical example here. Um, so basically, I've showed you lists before, and what I talk, one of the things I talked about is being able to iterate over a list and do something uh, with each element. So one thing I can do is I can do a list.each. So that means I'm going to go over uh, each element in the list and print it out. So if I run that, I get one, two, three. So you know that, that allows you to actually iterate over a list and pull things out. Now when I mentioned before linked lists, if you did something like this, uh, tip, you know, typically in other languages when you iterate over you know, different variables, if you're not using what's called an iterator, it would actually do the, uh, it would use the pointer for each lookup and which would be very slow. But in you know, this particular language, it, I'm sure in the underneath, uh, Groovy would actually use the iterator. It uses that when it uses the dot each, so that uh, you know th it does this uh, in a, you know a, as performant way as possible. Um, there are other ways of uh, actually going through this uh, that I mentioned in uh, further uh, in the uh, Groovy tutorials, which is you know beyond the scope of the boot camp. But there's a lot of other things you can do with lists and collections, as I mentioned before. So one last thing I'm just going to mention here, but I'm not actually going to show, is the idea of recursion. Because this gets into something that uh, I'm going to talk about in the next episode when I talk about functions. So recursion is another way of actually looping over things. And uh, it's a very powerful way of uh, doing things. 
So, but it has, like anything else, it has its own, own pros and cons. So that's all I wanted to talk about with uh, loop structures. So I'll see you next time.